Oz-ians. I'm the Louisiana Quadling, a Wizard of Oz collector and enthusiast, sharing with you my thoughts, my collection, and a little bit of my musical talent with all of you, and welcome to my channel. Today, we are going to be doing a comparison of these new Ruby Slipper replicas to find out what the differences are and possibly what things are the same. Hmm. Let's get started. For this comparison, we will be looking at two pairs of ruby slippers that I've got here. We have the replicas made by Icon Design Studio and the new pair that was just released this month from Paragon FX Group. For the sake of making things not confusing for both y'all and me, we will be referring to the Icon Design Studio pair as pair A and the new pair we will be calling Pair B. So to start off, let's look at first impressions of looking at both of the pairs side by side. One of the things that I noticed when I first put these two pairs next to each other was that it appeared that Pair B was larger than Pair A. The bows, of course, are considerably different sizes and might use different materials. We'll look at that a little bit later. It does appear that the red sequins are the exact same sequins though. So let me get out my little ruler and we'll find out if these shoes are actually different sizes or not. And if I... They're exactly the same size. When looking at the two slippers side by side, the beige color of the insides of pair A definitely draws your eye to the red sequins. Whereas if you're looking at pair B here, your eye immediately gets drawn to the white inside, which is why this pair appears to be bigger because this white inside is overpowering the red sequins. I now kind of understand why um, some Wizard of Oz collectors with their Ruby Slippers replicas will put black velvet inside of the slippers. That's Probably because the shoes have white insides. I don't know if you do this. Comment down below. Um, I would definitely do that with this pair. Just so that you're not looking at the white. You're actually looking at the red sequins. And your eye doesn't just go straight to those white insides. Uh, pair A here, you definitely don't get drawn to that beige. You go straight to the red sequins. From what I can guess with these two pairs that I have here, that most likely since this is a licensed product, um, most likely the shoe was designed and I would assume that the other Icon Design Studio, the Yellow Brick Road Edition, which is the one that I didn't get, is the exact same shoe as this. I don't know. I don't have one to compare with these, but I can confirm that this new pair, pair B, is the exact same shoe as pair A. They're exactly the same size. At least from measuring them. Measuring them. We'll next look at the bows. The obvious difference between the two is that pair B has larger bows than pair A. Pair B has three rows of the bugle beads, whereas pair A has only two rows of the bugle beads. Both of them are trying different techniques to recreate the original bows from the ruby slippers to varying degrees of accuracy. I think the pair A here definitely has the size better than pair B. Um, these bows are definitely a little bit too big for what the bows were on the original slippers. But another thing that I also noticed since we're doing really, 
really looking at these beads, they're plastic beads. And I would definitely guess that the original ruby slippers had glass beads instead. I definitely prefer the bows on pair A than pair B because they're smaller and they look a little bit more size accurate to what the original ruby slipper bows looked like. Next, I'm looking at the sequins, and they appear to be exactly the same way that they were applied onto the shoes. There's a very clear line down the backs of the shoes, and also on the fronts of the shoes. So the way that they were applied looks to be exactly identical. The only difference between the slippers is that pair A has damage to the sequins on the backs, and that is because of the way that they were packaged and shipped. This newest pair, pair B, doesn't have that problem. They've definitely found a solution and fixed that with the way that these were packaged and shipped. And going back to the insides of the shoes, this new pair, pair B, the inside is clearly sewn into place. You can see the stitches. Whereas pair A, it looks like it's been glued. There's also written on the inside on pair A is uh, Judy Garland number seven. And the newest pair B doesn't have anything written on the inside. They're completely blank. The bottoms of the shoes are also slightly different. Pair A has a glossy red paint on the bottom and also has the size of the shoe imprinted into the base, 5B. Pair B has a flatter red paint and also has that orange felt applied onto the bottom. So while these replicas use the exact same base shoe to recreate um, the replica slippers, they've definitely applied things differently onto the shoes and used different materials. I personally like pair A better than pair B. That beige inside color is definitely a much superior choice than having this white interior because your eye immediately with pair A gets drawn to those red sequins and the bows. Whereas with pair B, your eye instantaneously goes to that white and it's a little bit distracting. Now, what should you do? Should you purchase pair B that's currently available now? I'd say if you don't have a pair of replica ruby slippers in your collection, go for it. Absolutely. This might be your only opportunity to get a replica pair of slippers that's as affordable as these are. There are other collectors that I know of that have spent well over a thousand dollars, two thousand dollars to get a pair of ruby slippers. So while that $350 price tag on this new pair is a little high, it's definitely not in the thousands of dollars high. And also considering how this first pair of replicas that came out from Icon Design Studio were, I believe, somewhere around $250 um, with the exchange rate with Australia because these were originally released in Australia. I can only assume that the next time that they'll make a replica of the ruby slippers that the price will yet again increase. And I'd really hate for you to have to pay uh, somewhere around $500 for a pair of replica ruby slippers when you could have easily gotten one for less than that amount. But at the end of the day, this is your Wizard of Oz collection. So, you decide what you want to add to your collection and what you don't. Out of the two replicas that I have here, which one do you think is better? Let's have a discussion down in the comments section. And if you liked that video, please give it a thumbs up, comment down below, and subscribe. 
New videos are posted every two weeks on the 15th and last day of each month. And if that doesn't satisfy your appetite for Oz, follow the link in the description to ozclub.org and join the International Wizard of Oz Club. Until next time, bye y'all.